everyone's talking about property at the moment and the big question out there is what are people doing with rates are they fixing are they variable there's so much turbulence to talk about it let's discuss what we're seeing on the coal face shortly Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Morning Minutes, episode 400. Big, big day, 36 hours. 30, we worked out the other day, 36,000 hours put into the show with my co-host, Mark Novak. How are you? Good, buddy. That's a, that's a lot of hours. A lot of hours, a lot of episodes, a lot that's of a content. a lot of real estate love. Yeah. Well... Yeah, it's insane when you think about it. But let's get into it. This morning, we're going to be talking about rates, what we're hearing from buyers, landlords in particular, um, yep. because there's, let's face it, anyone who got a loan or refinanced a loan 15, 12 months ago, two years ago, and God forbid, three years ago, and have not, and has not refinanced or basically spoken to their bank or broker about getting a new rate, you're paying too much. Yep. Yeah, it's nuts. Um, and we've all got those, you know, around the barbecue or dinner table sort of conversations with friends where, you know, everyone's got a sore head about coming, you know, particularly being on, on a high rate. Even some people now are, are coming off pretty high rates. So they're sitting at, you know, 4% at the moment, some people that I've spoken with, um, clients, yeah. friends. And um, when you're looking at the coal face of two and a half percent for a lot of loans out there, that's a big one and a half percent on uh, on your money. It's a, a big different, huge uh, difference in uh, payments. And it's like let's it, it's not not normal to fix it for three or is five years common or is that I'm just trying to think where some people. Like five years ago, weren't rates five, six percent, or was that about eight years ago? I'm just trying to think. There would be people coming out of some really, really high rates, um, yep. and they're going to get a, a very pleasant shock when things change. Like when you oh, go from four, four and a half percent down to one point nine percent, it could be a couple grand a month you're saving. Yeah, look, and I think tactically, um, what what people can't forget about is um, it's like a casino. You know, there's the saying, the house always wins. Um, yes. You are betting against some pretty experienced and some pretty, um, some pretty smart people out there. So, um, you know, I, I guess it's, your, it's, it's a punt. It's a bet um, that will, will you uh, – some people see it as a safety net. Some people saw it, see it as insurance that they're going to be okay if rates go up. They need that to sleep. I get it. Um, but yeah, those interest rates were sitting at five or six percent, and I distinctly remember about two years ago, three years ago, there was this freakish, freakishly weird push from banks to, to, you know, Mark, you should fix your rates. Mark, you should fix your rates. I was talking to these, you know, all different banks that I deal with, who were all sort of unified and came together saying I should fix. I was like, yeah. that's weird, because then I was talking to other people in business, and they're like, yeah, we're getting that same push as well. And it's almost like they knew the rates were going to come down further, so they all they sort of rallied a bit to, to get their customers. To and that sure. was when they hit it's just safe. under 3%, I, I think, just under 3 where yeah. that was unheard of. Banks saying fix it for a couple of years. Um, and so let's that's, that's a big message to get out there. If you haven't refinanced or re-looked at your loan, in 12 to 18 months, then that's step one. Then you've got the decision to make now. Mark, do you fix it now because we're at historically low or variable? Well, that's right. And good morning to Sean. Good morning to Anmal. Anmal, how are you, you legend? Anmal would have a great insight to this as well. I'd love just a quick question for Anmal if um, Gerdif is there or if you've heard what's the hot because. Anmal and Gerd, if they've got the finance brokering side of the business with them um, in their real estate office, 
So I'd, if have you seen any ridiculously high drops? Like you've had a client refinance from four and a half down to one point nine or five percent down to two percent. Have you seen? Have you heard? What's the biggest you've seen just in recent times? If you wouldn't mind yeah. sharing that, if you got that hand, I'd love to just hear that. She's probably driving the kids to school, and she's got a doesn't have a finger. But um, yeah, true, true, true. Mate, it, it's it's very very interesting because. Right now, we're at a really, really critical turning point um, in the marketplace where these low rates were being used to ignite the property market, a bit like a bit like a match. Yep. And the, the property market's on fire. Um, so uh, there's this emotion that people have inside them saying, well, if the banks are using that lever um, of rates, lowering rates to push a push across our property market, which gives confidence to people, which pushes our, our, our whole economy, um, are the banks now going to go the opposite direction to try to slow down the real estate market by putting those rates up? Um, you know, it's it's, uh, it's a dangerous world to this. It could be adverse and it could put us in a tailspin. So it's... Um, it's a very interesting place the, the uh, reserve banks in because what often happens is the reserve banks, you know, set, uh, you know, is setting that is setting that base rate. The banks have their overrider on top, so um, the reserve banks decides to put rates up. Um, you know, potentially dangerous times, but there's a lot of media out there that we're reading where um, there's been there's been promises made or commitments made. To, the, to Australians by the government that rates aren't going to go up until 2023 or around there. But um, we haven't even talked about fixed rates. Yeah. Now, this is sort of my view on it, and I, I reckon the market will be full steam ahead until other markets open up, tourism, international education, all of that. Until that happens, I think it's smooth sailing as we need property market to boom to stimulate construction and until we have other levers, that's going to happen there. So, and a lot of talk is at least a year before a lot of that international will open up. So, I think that's that's sort of one time frame in my head, like one check mark when that t- stuff opens up. Then w- it will be interesting, as you said, how the government will handle it, how the Reserve Bank, because I think the Reserve Bank, until they get to that till that checkpoint, it's we're just going to be smooth sailing. Um, so then with fixed or so if you can fit what are they offering about fixed markets i think it's well here we go i've got this loan variable what's this refinance while you're bringing that up there's some significant markers in the marketplace that 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 are that you, you can watch as a consumer um got several these so if you got a how much can i save by refinancing fixed monthly 250 dollars a week and you're on a three hundred thousand dollar loan, and you're saving about three grand a year. And I think this is only off if you had a loan under twelve months ago. So, obviously, if you've got um, an older loan, look at that one point five million. I reckon you have a lot of loans around a million. So that's ten thousand dollars a year you could be saving, and variable about eight thousand three hundred. Median price in Sydney eight percent LVR. Yeah. Yeah, so or eight hundred. That's significant per month money. Yeah, twelve hundred. So you're saving, you're saving two hundred eighty per month, or four hundred bucks per month, or a hundred bucks a week, just by talking to a broker and getting getting that um getting that sorted out. Um, See, these something. figures are based on a three point five. Sorry, Mark, I'll read out just to put the figures in context. Uh, figures are based on a three point five percent interest rate down to a one point eight nine fixed and a 2.19 variable, 70% LVR over a 30 year term. So I think that's pretty reasonable. So yeah, your, your typical 800K is 8K a year. Any of the big, any uh, any big loans out there, 2 million. Well, these days we just sold a knockdown for two. So two doesn't even seem that big. That's $20,000 a year, Mark. That's huge. After yes, two years, is. you've got a deposit for another unit just off refinancing okay obviously now, we're not we're not saying all that but yeah 
reading that data there, you can see the differences between staying with variable and staying with fixed. Um, what did happen when we went into um, COVID and there was rescue packages announced? A lot of those rescue packages that went across um, in terms of banking uh, for consumers were attributed to fixed terms. So the government and the banks, um, the government gave the bank gave consumers a lot of money through banks, and banks pushed those incentives through on fixed terms. So if you're wondering why there's an art of, there's fixed term rates are great, but because of the incentives the government uh, put in place through COVID, fixed terms were even more awesome. So they were artificially good. Um, why? Because the government wanted that solidness in the marketplace. The government wanted um, people not to be fickle and sell quickly um, and just jump in or jump out of the market. They wanted that solid real estate market. So by yeah. by those incentives coming through in fixed rates, it did create a rock solid, sturdy property market, even more so than it was. So what would you be doing, Mark? personally or what are you hearing mainly buyers so what are you mainly hearing buyers are doing now on the on the ground are they fixing it or are they going variable say a new buyer um, into the market oh look i i think i remember um dad my dad was probably the best with money and, and I, I took some advice from him and uh, that was for him to fix he said son fix your rates and um and i did i did that uh what, a long time ago and I got screwed. Uh, back yeah. then, I, I think I was I was fixing um, some mortgages at it's probably 20, 25 years ago. I was fixing some mortgages at I think it was nine percent, uh, yeah. whereas the market ended up going to seven percent. It ended up costing me about thirty grand, uh, mm. 30, forty grand over that period of hard earned money. Um, so and I have I have been burned. And I think, guys, just to remember, like. You're, you have time. Let's say you go variable and you see rates going up. Like nothing's going to be dramatic, even though it feels dramatic where we say rates were 4%, now they're two. And you just think, holy shit, I better fix it. It could go 4%. My two grand mortgage goes to four. These changes happen in small increments generally over a long period of time. So you can potentially ride the wave of the variable, but if you start seeing that trend go up, then you could look at refinancing and then fix it. Um, you're not likely to get caught one day paying a two grand mortgage and then the next month it's five grand. So you you don't. It's good to be aware of it, but you don't need to sort of let it play mind games on you. Do your market. You can sort of no. be patient and see and, and see what happens. The, the ten year bond market has been going down for a very very long time. The ten-year bond market is just for the first time in a very, very, very long time has actually gone up. So that's an indicator that, that rates are, are in the long term going and are on the way up. Yeah. Also, very uh, fixed-term rates have uh, over the last couple of weeks have started hedging up a little bit. Um, that's another indicator. But I do have to say I get worried with fixed terms because sometimes I think they can be used a little bit to spook the market to jump into high into. Um, into fixing um, and then you just have to go back down again you know in a year or two's time so me personally I, 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 I'm a variable boy um, that's what works well for me what about you um, I've got fixed at the moment so I wanted that structure and, and steadiness but I'll look into it a bit later I think no that's all they I don't even know actually fixed I've been paying the same amount no, it'd be variable. I probably don't even know. Even though I'm paying the same, it could be variable and more is going towards principal. I've just I'm paying the fixed amount. I'm paying a consistent amount, but I believe I'm on variable. I should really know that. That's bad. But but I, I would be interested to see. I predicted that forget. rates would go as low. Yes, yeah, and forget. I think I set up my payment as fixed, but it is a variable interest at the back end. So whatever it yeah, yeah, uh, that could be like um, So I predicted, there was an economist who predicted rates would go as low as 1.6 to 1.7. I'll be interested to see if, if they're still predicting that just because our growth 
and our clearance rates have been so huge. So I wonder if they'll keep it, if we're going to keep at this steady rate because the market has, I don't think people would have thought our market would have been so strong the past six months that it, as it has. It's interesting, when, it's interesting when the economy is really good or when the, or when the property market's really good, the, the government's just tight lipped. Although yeah. when, when times are really bad or when the property market's really bad, the government's very, very uh, forward in, in trying to get, in, you know, trying to shake it up, get it working. But uh, certainly I think if you're looking for uh, for what their thoughts are, that yeah, I, th- I think they're going to definitely, I don't think they're freaking out that it's uh, that, that, that it's rallying. I think they're quietly happy because of no. the confidence in, into their strained economy people. And what I've been saying to a lot of buyers, we're not at uncharted territories. We're back to sort of the level we were at 2017 and people weren't thinking the world was going to end there. So when you're looking at properties and you're worrying that they're too high, they have been higher at another point. So you can have that comfort that it's okay. Um, you know, it's. I just think that gives people a little bit of reassurance to know we're not at uncharted territories. But the rate we're going, we will be in a month or two. <laughs> we will be seeing record after record after record. Yeah. But yep. right now, sort of have a have a chance, especially with rates so low. Look at the diff. I think stress to people, the price difference, 10, 15 grand, 20 grand may feel like a lot, but look at the difference on your mortgage and see if you really want that property because it may only be quite little ten dollars a week to secure it I think that's right. all right yeah, have, a, have a great week monday love it and how cold is it now winter's on its way yeah it, it'll be exciting get the coat back out i don't mind it, it. All right, we'll be back cheers see you, see you guys bye